Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning and welcome to Ames Public Library, both in person and virtually for today's Genealogy Plus, a program brought to you through partnership with Ames Public Library and the Story County Genealogical Society. I'm Megan, I'm the Adult Services Manager here at Ames Public Library, and our mission is to connect you to the world of ideas, which we do through diverse and inclusive resources and prog programming like today's event. For those of you with us in person, uh, the room is equipped with an induction loop for the benefit of hearing aid users. To use that, please switch your hearing aid to T. Uh, also, restrooms are just outside behind the welcome desks. If you need to use those, please feel free to leave the room whenever you need to. For those of you with us virtually, we'll be muting your microphones during the presentation, so please submit your questions via the chat function, which you should find a link to in your Zoom uh, taskbar. I'll be monitoring the chat to make sure that your questions get shared with our speakers uh, when appropriate. And if you get bumped out of the Zoom meeting, just follow that original link back to us. You'll be able to get right back in. Uh, I have enabled live captioning. So if you're not seeing a caption, but you would like to, please click on the live transcript button to turn that on. Uh, today's session is being recorded and will be posted to the Ames Public Library YouTube channel after the event, and there will be time for questions at the end of the presentation. So if you're on Zoom, uh, I will be reading those questions out for you. Just pop them in the chat. So with that, I will welcome Jim and Annette from the Ames Family Search Center. Yes, um, the Ames Family Search Center has been... Well, it's been functioning for, we've been there 25 years, so it's been functioning about 30 plus years, not as a family search center, that's a new change, but as a family history center. And there's been a lot of changes over those 25 or 35 years. Um, you know, we'll have to submit you to two commercials. Here's number one. The, the, this is a great event. Um, and one of the best things to do is that you can go and, where is that? Hmm, well, they changed stuff. Anyhow, um, you can listen to experts in the field of genealogy and their special fields uh, teach and, and direct. Uh, there is two two things happening this year. Instead of all being online, some of it is uh, live, and so for a hundred bucks or plus a piece, you can go and be there live in uh, Salt Lake Palace. I guess is where it is in Salt Lake. Uh, yeah, something like that. Um, but there's other costs to get there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is a very cheap way of doing it. The other thing that will happen is many of those classes that are live uh, may be recorded. Uh, if they have syllabus or digital syllabus, you'll probably be able to download them. So many of those classes that will be presented not online, you'll be able to get information from them. Okay. Um, Let's see. Okay, here's the opening page for Family Search as it exists today. If you come on the site very often, you'll notice that it changes. I guess that is what happens in the digital world. Um, I. This is um, more or less discover your family story at Family Search Center. So let's find a family search center. And it shows a map and let's look for Iowa. Okay. And I'll bring up a map and there you go. In our area, there's a lot of them. Um, and there's two colors there. Now let's see if I can. Well, yeah, go out. Yeah, that's right. That's what I want to do. If you look at this, you have these places. Those are affiliate library, like 
this library in which you can go and get some of the, you can see some of the records that are locked to you at home. You can see most of them here. There are a few that you have to go to the Family Search Center. And this happens to be, nope. This is Mason City. There's somebody at Fort Dodge. This is Clear Lake. It's there, Clear Lake Public Library. And then if you look here, that's Ames Public Library. And they're hiding. How about that? Oh, well, anyhow, Ames is right here. <laughs> uh, you guys are aggressive, aren't you? <laughs> Come on. Well, anyhow, there's one in Marshalltown and then down in Des Moines area. Anyhow, um, the, there we go. Let's go there. The Ames Family Search Center right now, it's open on Tuesdays from noon to three. Basically, there's only two people, well, four people that will be there at that time. Um, and the demand hasn't been that great. Now, if you really need to be there, you need to call us and we'll open the place up for you and we'll, we'll work with you at that, at that time. That phone number isn't good. Well, nobody's going to answer that phone number because that's up at the Family History Center and if they're closed, uh, more information. Come on. There we go. There we go. Right down there. Um, uh, if you need us, if you need to get in there at a time different than our open time, that's, uh, that's our phone number. Okay. So much for that. Let's go here. And let's go back. Okay. What we're going to... Oh, right here. There's a question mark. You have questions. There's any... Over there, there's any number of responses, inf, uh, answers to questions you can get by typing in... Um, a request there and here, or uh, you can go to Help and Learning, which now pre presents you with um, videos or other information about different topics. Um, and there's a there's a lot of, there's a few other things left there, but I'm going to go back. We're going to talk about today that menu selection. We're not going to talk about family tree. We're not going to talk about memories, uh, getting involved in activities. We're only going to talk about that. Um, and so I want to move down here to, oh, there's a new entry, dear. I've never seen that one before. I didn't see that yesterday. No, okay. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, research wiki. This is one of the one of the, a great tool for you because it will help you get started. It will help you find out what resources are available for your your area of interest. Um, it, you can click on here, for instance, the wiki policies. If you see up here, there's the wiki policy. If you click on if you click on that, ah, no. Anyhow, there's a lot of stuff there. Uh, I want to go and go back here and search for Iowa. Okay, it brings up this page and you can see what's available. Um, if you want, you can become an editor. You have to jump through some hoops, but you can be involved in editing of this. And um, there are requirements and there are people that that um, guide you, et cetera, et cetera. So there we are. 
And if we go over here, you can choose what county you want to go to. So I'm going to go to Clayton County. That's where I was, where I got my start. Okay. And if you go down here, you can see, well, okay, these are the beginning dates for government county records. Were there any records lost? No, there wasn't a fire where the records were kept as far as Clayton County was concerned. Uh, boundary changes. There's a whole history about how the county got got involved. Clayton County and the counties along the east part of, uh, along the Mississippi River actually, were some of the early counties and they had some dynamics. Uh, uh, first, they were huge counties and they start breaking them down into, as they add other uh, other counties. And that history is, is here and you can get into that. Now, if you see this, there's an up pointing arrow, right? And if you click on that, it's gonna take you someplace else. And um, it's gonna get you more information uh, if that's of interest to you. Um, you also, if you go down here, you can see the cities in Clayton County, you can see the cities that don't exist anymore. It's interesting. Millville was a place of existence during my childhood. Wasn't much there, but it did, did exist. And some of these other, Sears has a beautiful church there. Um, the last I knew, it was still uh, being treated as a historical site. And you go down here further, you can find out what what graves, uh, what all that's in, that's available. Um, that's there's so much stuff in here i was working on trying to get some place yes yesterday up at family search center and i got lost you ever get lost in a website i knew where i wanted to go but i couldn't figure out how to get there and you know if you if you go out to google and you and you search sometimes you can get closer to it than you if you search from in here but there's a there's a, a reasonable search function here right over there you can go search for some function and it'll take you places um and then there's a list of bi biographies um you go down here uh right someplace there's court record directories funeral homes to me, this is meaningful because uh, this uh, Tiki Allen funeral home, which no longer is that, it's a Morris funeral home or something like that, was across the street from my grandmother's. And um, both parents were uh, dealt with by them. And so that's, but anyhow and then if you you can go to their site for instance if you go to tiki funeral home you'll find out that it's no longer it goes to morris funeral homes and as the stuff is changing just too fast anyhow um so there is all kinds of places to go here information to get um they have what they call a guided, let's see how, if I can get to that. Yeah, they have a guided uh, research function and you'll see a list over here and there's a lot of places you can go. Let's look at, uh, how about now? And go way down to the end of US, where the heck? There we go. United States. And it'll pop up. Well, what are you doing? Well, let's go. Yeah, anyhow. There we are. Guided research. And then they have all kinds of stuff. There's United States. And now you can choose Iowa. And then it it's not the same page as I was as I was in, but if you want to look for births, well, it tells you 
kind of how to go about doing that. Anyhow, there's a lot of stuff there. Jim? Yeah? Are those different records then in both of those sites that you were just in? Records meaning in different web pages, oh, births or deaths, or do they lead you to the same? Yeah, they, they'll lead you. I mean, if we go to Iowa, yeah. and then they'll come up with um, birth, and then they'll go to um, Iowa birth collections, and there's an index in historical records, which is and and that's project, but. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it'll take it take you places, and um, it takes. Let me get back. I mean, I'm okay. Want to get back? Just hit Family Search. It'll take you back to the front page. Um, now, to, to do anything more, you have to sign in. Uh, and if you would go to the birth records and actually want to go and search, you would probably have to sign in. You will have to sign in to see the records anyhow. So let me sign in. Now, there are many ways to sign in. You can sign in with your face, Facebook account, your Google account, your Apple account, your church account if you're a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And then they also have a, an account that is separate from all that stuff. Okay. Then it comes up with this page. Ah, advertisement again. Okay. And then it'll, it, this page is, is, can be slightly, you can, change how it looks uh, to your preference. And some of these things you can keep on. This is family members. Um, and then anyhow. But the reason I went here is because I want to go to search and I want to go to images. Now, I think the best way to search in here is by locality. I think. And what this am amounts to is this is all the um, microfish, microfilm that is not indexed, that has been converted to digital. Um, no long, back in the old days, uh, well, back. 20 years ago, you could order a microfilm from Salt Lake and you could read it in the local area, in the, in the Family Search Center, for instance, or Family History Center. No longer can you do that. Microfilm films aren't, you can't rent them, you can't get them. Everything that they can, that the church can, or Family Search can, digitized has been digitized. And here is how you get it. Now, what do you, how do you know what you're looking for? Well, I uh, said, well, let's see what they have for Clayton County. Now, well, those don't look like I want to be there. So let's uh, add county after it. Oh, there we go, right there. And so I can search. And it will come up with a bunch of records. Well, it will. <laughs> there we go. Now I have a question for Mary. Why Volga? Why what? Volga. Is that a Volga County? A township, maybe. A township? Or is it, there's a city of Volga, which is very close to Fayette County. I don't know. I could never figure that out. But anyhow, these are all items of microfilm. And what I'm going to do is find 
uh, let's see, one with 46. If you see it, holler out. There we go. This is uh, the sixth item in a microfilm, uh, which has 12 items in it. And it's um, a diary. And so I said, well, let's see what's let's see what's in there. So I click on it. Now uh, this may take a while, <laughs> but anyhow, it will open up the microfilm. So this microfilm um, is an interesting one. If you look up, let's see, yeah, okay, I should be able to go here. If you open that up, it said that that was uh, Don Mosier family history. Well, Don Mosier is a what? Cousin several times removed. Um, and it was done in El Cater, where they where they where they filmed it. And it was done in uh, 89, 1989. Now if we go over one, and I won't go into this much, but you can expand this so that it can be read. And this is about one John George Calker. Now, does it have any relationship to me? Well, actually, Annette is more related to him than I am. Anyhow. Um, and But what's interesting about this is this talks about uh, John who enlisted in the military and served in the Mexican War. Now, as you read this, you'll find out that he actually was in Mexico, around Mexico City, fighting. Did anybody know that from the Mexican War? Oh, we can. Mexican War, all we know is basically that there was the Alamo. But anyhow, anyhow, it's very interesting reading. And it's like the old days where you go to the microfilm and you start searching. Now, in this, I mean, basically, you go on, you can find out the fact that he died young, the fact that he had a wife who was a gray bell, uh, who had uh, several children um, read on, and she marries another guy who was the most vicious guy, whatever, you know. Uh, but it's, it's, there was a question last meeting, the last time we met, about how do you find out about what was happening in the time of these ancestors? Well, this is the place you got to go. You got to go into the, um, there's there's another part of this, um, oh, let me get out of here. There's another part of this, um, a thing that has the Kane diaries. And there is, the, the guy has kept the diary on a daily basis for 25, 30 years. And they're all recorded in on this microfilm or two microfilms. Okay. I should be done pretty soon, right? Okay. Yeah, okay. That's not surprising. Okay, let's go to search now, and I'm going to touch on catalogs a bit. But catalogs, let's see here. What catalogs permit you to do is you, if you know what the film number is, you can click on that, and you can put in the microfilm number or the image group number, which happens to be um, this number that I'm looking for. Zero, zero. Six. Okay, there you go. That's what we were looking at. And it says that, well, it's a John Moser history um, a cemetery, the Grave Bell family Bible, which is connected with the Calkers. Um, this is uh, the James Crane 
Diaries, which is um, a very interesting read. Do you get names and build out your pedigree? No, but it's very interesting. And then there's the Minger family. Well, I'm more connected to the Minger family than any of this other. But anyhow. So now let's go back and let's search on something. How did you find that number? Well, when I when I found the images that we were looking at, yeah. there was a number listed okay. there. And and that's the group. And the group number is not specific to the images that would appear on the other side because basically uh, they break it down into uh, item two out of 12, item three out of 12 in, in that image thing. This one here, um, yeah. Okay, now we can go to places. And so let's go and look for story count. Oops. Story. Hmm. Oh, wow. Spelling isn't right there, is it? Okay. Now you notice something. They switched this on us. Now it's United, uh, the country, the state, et cetera. Why they do that, I don't know, but, and let's look at county, and let's see if it comes up with, there we go, right down here, the United States style of story, county, and now we can search. Okay, this is going to come up with all kinds of stuff that are connected with story county. Now let's look in cemeteries. Now I think, Mary, you know where I'm going here, right? And if we come down here, we look, uh, oh, oh, well, Iowa Cemetery, Story County Genealogy Society. Wow, look at that. And they tell you, well, this is the book. And if you go down here further, you'll find that this cat catalog, you can, in the catalog, you can go now, go to, um, oh, is it, uh, World Cat, yeah. And this will tell you where you can find them. Uh, can I accept them? So basically, that Nevada, is that Nevada there, Nevada? Hmm. Let me see here, I get mixed up looking at that. Here we go. There is um, Nevada Public Library has that, but you also can go anyhow, or you can go to Family Search Library, which is in Salt Lake City, which they don't give us a mileage on this. They used to say it was 950 miles. Oh, I wish that was the case. Okay. Um, so if I go back to here, I can click on, if we don't go down further, I can click on them right there. And there's volume one, volume two. And we see that we have a photo that we can look at. And there is the book, the, heart, the book that the society put together back, but quite a few years ago. Anyhow, if you know, if, if you know a book, you can search for it and you can find out where to get it. Um, that's good. Oh, my time is up. Anyhow, let's get out of here. I need to turn the time over to Ann for something more interesting. But anyhow. Okay. Um, there's also a Clayton County history book that um, if you go onto the catalog, you can find where you can find a copy of that. It also is online. So, boy, oh boy, oh boy. I don't like one. I... Okay. 
app. Well, I can't get to the family search icon. There we go. Okay. Well, there's like there's a lot of stuff here. I com I covered images. There is what they call genealogies, which is an opportunity for you to send a copy to the church of the JetCon file of your of your genealogy. What they do is they then store it in that form or in a process form. It cannot be edited. You can't edit it either. In order for you to make changes, you have to submit a new JetCon file. But it is searchable and pe other people can see it. It will not be changed and it's stored. And some of those genealogies are left over from way back. Um, and if you go and search in those, you'll get information that was provided by the person that donated it. Um, and you'll have to take it for what it's worth. I'm going to turn the time over to Annette. Okay. Better. Wasn't sure if I'd be able to see the laptop with those glasses or not. Um, any question? Well, I'll we'll leave questions for Jim for later, I guess. I am going to spend um, some time, a brief amount of time talking about books, and then we'll spend a, more of the time I have on the records. And books, you, they actually call it the digital library. Um, I need my cheat sheet here on that one. This is a collection that Family Search, the Family Search Library in Salt Lake has of um, wrong, erase that. This is a collection of digitized books that Family Search Library has. And in addition, there are a lot of uh, partners that they work with that um, that. Um, have allowed Family Search to digitize their some of their collections and then to post them online. Um, and if you scroll down on that, I'm not going to go through those contributors who want to find out who they are. Um, if you scroll down a little bit on that home screen and it says digital library contributors. You can also submit a, a book if and they have um, information about how you can do that if you choose to do so. And then the about, um, we won't go into that. There's a sh little short video and, and some other information about how to use uh, the library. Um, basically, the way I tend to not do the advanced search, but you can do an advanced search when you search. It allows you to go to title, subject, author, um, if you have specific a specific book in mind, that's a a handy way to jump right to that. I just want to do a broad search in this um, part of of the program here today. So I am going to do just a couple of ways that can be searched. One of the things I do is just, excuse me, type a place. Oops, that was that, I hope that was a capital O. If it wasn't, it, it might have been a zero. This is a really little screen. Oops, I wanted to stick a place in. We have a theme going here with Clayton County. So what kind of covers that? You have to kind of click off to do, I'm gonna get rid of the advanced search and just do a search in general so that we get it so I can give you a feel of what um, 
the screen looks like when you you get to a to a search result. Um, off to the left, there are places that you can um, move again to the advanced search if you want without having to go back out to the main screen. Um, and you would just click that and it drops down again those um, headings or those categories to fill in. You can search also or filter by the creator. That means the person who created the book. These are all published. The, the difference between the books and the random images that Jim talked about are that these are collections of published works. The images, most of them are probably not. Um, and just things that have been submitted or microfilmed by Family Search. So you can do a, a search by creator, by subject, by language, um, by whoever owns the book. That would be reference to those other libraries that have contributed to the collection. And then the most important one, I guess, for for understanding whether or not you can see the book is an the access level. And if I click on this, um, you won't always see all of these uh, five access levels. The 108C exception was new to me. And, and from what I understand, and perhaps Megan knows a little bit more about this, this is a would be a book that is under copyright, and an allowance has been made for it to be digitized, to uh, be available for research and for preservation purposes. And feel free to cor correct that if 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 I'm totally off base here. That was what I I had never heard of that before. So that's what I gleaned from my googling of, of what that might be. So um, full permission means that a book, whoever owns the copy, this book is copyrighted, uh, or those books are copyrighted. Whoever owns the copyright has allowed it to be digitized and put on family surge. It grants people who are using that book through family surge to be able to access that online and to download or print, but you need to remember using that particular book that is still is under copyright, so that fair use policy for copyright exists. And so you need to be careful about what you do with that information after you receive it or copy it. Limited permission means that um, there is a copyright on the book and you can um, let's see, hang on a second. There is a copyright and you can view it, you can view it, but you cannot print or download it. So it's a read only. Um, protected means that it's been digitized, um, but you can't view it online. And then public, it's, it's free open access. So you can filter that, um, the numbers there are, since I did a really, really broad search, the numbers are um, reference to what type, how many books are in that particular uh, access level. So I am going to go just down here to the history of Clayton County Schools really quick. Um, this is, there are two ways to, um, view the books i'm in the list view there's a grid view which puts just the little images up doesn't have the that um doesn't have this information viewable um and i'm not going to do that ever again because yesterday when i was giving it a try everything all of a sudden had titles in chinese so <laughs> Feel free to give it a try. I'm just definitely not going to do it here right now. Um, took me a while to figure out how to get out of that. So I'm just going to go down to this particular book. I can tell that it's public access. It lists the access level there, tells us how many pages are there. 
and to view inside, it gives you a little snippet usually of what might be in the book. Um, you view inside and this is what it will look like. Off to the right is again, the summary of the access level. If you had a book that had the limited uh, or the uh, full permission, it would tell you the information that I told you about what the uh, access level means. Um, again, this is just a summary. You can get rid of that part by clicking the X. And then the, um, I'm gonna kind of turbo this. The icons, if you hover over the icon, it tells you what is what. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna uh, spend time going through all of those, but it just tells you what you can do with the image. If you wanted to, if you knew a page number, if you had a book specifically, you knew a page number, um, you can type, you can just highlight that and type in the page number. Um, this little magnifying glass is search. So if I wanted to, let's go with Millville. Jim's mom taught school in Millville at one point in time in her life in a one room country schoolhouse. Um, and this will then, well, did I not, did I put one too many? I can't, I put one too many else, sorry. Going, aging is not as fun as I thought it might be sometimes. Vision and hearing, they're both going. So you get results then from that particular word and you could do a, a phrase, I believe, um, best probably to do quotes around it um, if you want the two words uh, next to each other. So I'm just going to click here. And then again, it's a typewritten, um, and we'll pick up all the information of where that particular word or phrase is. Oh, there's a known name there. So that is basically the, in a really quick nutshell, the books. Close that. And did I just click us out? I hope not. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Did I? Oh dear. Go up to the other one. Go up to the next one over. Click on that. This oh. So I went completely out. Sorry. I've been known to do that too. Okay, sorry about that. Ah, didn't sign you out though, that's good. Sometimes it does. Okay, so I'm going to, as I said, no idea what cemeteries is. That's a project for this afternoon to try and find that one out. I'm going to go to records. Um, these are the indexed records that Family Search has, has gathered together. Um, most of the information comes from volunteers that have done the indexing over the years. And there are three different ways to access the records and they're listed here and I'm gonna kind of go out of order. Um, there's a search by place. You can either click on this map, type in a country or state name or browse places. All of those, both the map, all three, the map, um, find a country, browse places, they'll all get you to the same place, basically, eventually. Um, so on the map, it's it's clicker friendly here. You just, you know, click on them, click on your location. It drops. <laughs> Apparently, I cannot do that. I then we'll list uh, list the places to the side um, 
I am going to click on Iowa. You saw this briefly before in the in the uh, one of the screens Jim showed you. I don't generally use this this one myself. Just personal preference. It's a little busy for my for my taste, um, but it's helpful if I'm just going to search. I don't generally use it, but it's helpful in that um, it gathers together all all sorts of ideas of where you can um, learn about and access records. The Learning Center, Jim talked a little bit about that. Um, it's another way of accessing it. They have learning courses, um, most of them videos and of information that you can learn about how to search in Iowa. It's not a place to go find actual people's names. Um, not going to talk about the indexing project. And then also over here, it does um, put together all of the indexed records that um, are available for Iowa. Puzzled about that first um, entry there. I think it was maybe just a carryover in their um, alphabetizing and Illinois just got grouped with Iowa. Um, genealogies again, um, Jim talked about that and the image only records. He talked about that catalog also, but it's a one-stop place to kind of access all those things that are focused on Iowa. Going to go back to one more step. That's the location search. Um, find a collection. I'm going to, um, I know I'm going to talk about this John Coker that um, was in the Mexican War. So I want to find out if um, they have a collection that involves the Mexican War. Yeah, what's that Z come from? Sorry. And if there is a match, it'll start. The there we go. There it looks like there's two um, United States Mexican War Index and Service Records. That sounds really interesting, as does the Pension Index. So let's click on the Mexican War Index. And you will find a screen that looks, when you search, looks pretty much like this. It's yellow at this point, but you can enter the name, um, place, and a year, they suggest either birth or death year. This is a case of, you know how we are supposed to learn, uh, read the fine print? This is the point at which you want to read the big print. Um, talks about how to use this collection. That hits, that will take you to the wiki, um, the research wiki. And you can go ahead and browse all 211,000 some odd records if you want, or we're going to, I'm not going to do a search because I read the big print that says that these are records pile, compiled for the states of Mississippi, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, and the Mormon Battalion in Iowa. Um, not going to help me because this person lived in Iowa and, and even if he did um, muster in in uh, Wisconsin, that wouldn't help me either. So we're gonna skip that one. And go to, oops, Mexican Pension Exit. Okay. Now I can add, oops, I hit a note. I don't tend to alphabetize when I'm doing this and it doesn't seem to matter. Sometimes it does. And I have an approximate birth year. So I click on that and we have one person, does happen to be him. 
Um, this is uh, the search, what the screen, search screen, the search results screen were, looks at, looks like at this point in time. It pops up um, a place where you can filter and add life events. Over on the right, um, I won't be doing that with him because I'm in a very specific um, database. And so I'm not going to get any more information about him in this particular search. Um, just a quick definition of the icons here. Um, you can, uh, this little thingy bubble, supposed to be a pedigree chart, I believe, or the beginnings of, you can attach, you can view, view the attached tree for this person in family tree. I'm going to do that. And then that's all we're going to talk about family tree, because um, that's time for a whole nother three or four classes. If um, So if I click on that, it takes you right to, he has a, a page in family tree. There it is. And the reason I'm clicking is that within Family Tree, there are sources. It tells me that there are six sources for him that can be helpful to, um, if they've been accurately placed with this person, it can be helpful to finding a little bit more information about him. There is a entry for his uh, Iowa Armed Forces Grave Registration. Um, and then the rest of them are, while well, there's a pension index that we um, are on as a source, and the rest of them have to do with um, sources where he's, a, he's tagged in the source because he's named in the record, but he wasn't the prime person. It uh, had to do with his children. Um, so I am going to go back to the search results. And then we're going to go out to this one. Hmm? Oh, thank you. I would have wondered what I did. Okay, this is where I want to be. This is the search I usually use for whatever reason. I, I have no I have no reason for doing it, but it's the one I usually do. I'm in again. Oops, not either. Helps to get the. Oh boy. Sorry. Now I'm going to do Clayton County. And I'm going to move to a, just because, let's see. I'm going to move to a different member of the Colker family because the particular person that that was in the Mexican War um, had a very short life, um, so there are very few records for him um, on Family Search. This will give us a a little bit more of a broad um, options as far as uh, maneuvering in the search fields. Again, this is a this is for a John Thomas who is a descendant of the the other per, the man that we were looking at before. Um, again, has sources in in a tree, and it doesn't have to be it. It could be anyone that you're maybe not even familiar with that would have entered that information into the family tree. Um, so that's the pedigree chart. It's the connection to the source, to the person in family tree. This little um, piece of paper, uh, you can view the record details. 
And so we'll do that. It gives it open up opens up a new screen. Huh. Interesting. I was not expecting to see an image because we'll go back there. Uh, it just shows the little um, record details. If you scroll down a little bit here, there's a little camera that is usually indicative of an image being available. Um, so that was a surprise. It could be, aha, uh -huh. the reason it's there, and this is my guess, the reason that it doesn't show that there's an image there is that we're at the family, uh, we're at the, an affiliate library. And the reason I'm thinking that is if I scroll down and it talks about cite this record, um, gives you the source of the record. And right down here at the bottom, there's a microfilm number, which you would be able to uh, find in the catalog. And I happen to know an awful lot of the Clayton County records are what we call locked or limited access, unless you happen to be at a family search center or an affiliate library. We're here, so um, that's my guess as to why there's an image there. Doesn't matter, but I think if you were home and, and seeing a record that just had that little image or image details page, you would not be able to see this part. You'd be able to, you'd see a check, it would be check image availability and click on that and it may tell you, you needed to be at a family search center or an affiliate library. And if that's so totally confusing, I apologize and we'll try and iron that out later. Anyway, this is the image details. It gives the, Ooh, turbo that we need to. Um, it gives the person's name. Um, this is the indexed version. It was the um, information that was pulled from this image onto um, a computer field, computer fields, and this is what um, is displayed then for the index. And we may not be able to see an actual one that is just. Index. You can save that um, to um, you know, by copying the full record. You can print it. Um, there is an edit capability because it is a user. Uh, it is a an index, and there are sometimes errors in the indexing process. If you have uh, information that looking at this image, you think the spelling is wrong or or that whatever, you can um, edit that and you can share it um, via email or copy the link and 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 send it that way. Um, also off on the right are again, uh, how that information tell me that this person has been attached to a family tree and that there are also similar records um, that we could click on to um, further understand a little bit more about this person's life. For example, um, census. I'm gonna go back out here though to the original search results. And I don't know why that keeps popping up, but it does and I find it annoying. Um, Scrolling down here, um, then to a census record. We can click right to the image without going to the index. And again, it's a case of, of looking at a microfilm. You don't have to look at the full set um, because it, it goes right to the page that the person's information is on. And there's a slightly different version of a viewable image. Um, there we go. It looks like a little piece of paper with a itty bitty bitty 
camera inside. Um, that means that the, Im the image is available, but it will take you out to a site that is not Family Search. This one happens to be Find a Grave. Um, when I do this at home, it doesn't go right to the Find a Grave site. It says, it tells me I'm clicking out of Family Search. Do I want to do that? And then it will pop this up. And because I'm out in a different site, I need to close that particular window to get back to Family Search. You can, there are 400, uh, 741 results for um, this particular person's search. You can narrow that field down or filter it by um, the collection. Um, and it'll tell you over here how to, how you can, you can choose over here on the right hand side, how to filter that by collection, same by gender, race, birth, marriage, death. Um, um, other varies depend, it's another place or another time range. And then residence. Um, and that is by um, very broad residence, country, or I've only seen it be country rather than um, Iowa or, or you, uh, there you go. You click on the country, you can see that. And it tells you within the parentheses how many records can be found in that particular location. So I hit something that I did not want to hit. Let's see. I think I basically covered most of what I wanted to do on that. Anyway, let's go back. Um, are there any questions about? Place searching. It was a really quick. I'll come around with the microphone if you do have a question. Excuse me. What would you suggest in the way of searching? Is it better to enter a bunch of data when you're searching, or is it better to only enter the basics and then refine your search as you go? Um, really good question, and my personal preference, and you notice that when I did a search, I did first name, last name, a very kind of broad place, although I did narrow it down by country, and then just a birthday, and that, I didn't go, um, there are, and I didn't, I didn't uh, tell you that, thank you, Mary, for that question, because it reminded me, I'll get, short answer to your question is, I tend to you go with the theory of less information is more information sometimes. Um, it may be frustrating if you have a really common name, but my suggestion is not to get too specific uh, at the beginning. There are, are mechanisms to narrow your field, um, and that can be a little less frustrating than going specific and not finding anything that you want. Um, anyway, I, uh, does that answer it? That's my, that's my theory anyway. Um, unless you have a really unusual, well, I don't even know if I can say that unusual name, um, but, or an uncommon name, it might be okay, but, with the indexing and the computer formats, um, you can't rely on spelling. Um, so I, th I think uh, less information sometimes is better at, at the at the start of your search. And there are, but there are more options to from the should you choose to, you can go with a uh, what they call more options. It's like an advanced search gives you more. Um, 
options to filter right away. I don't want to do that either. Any other questions about anything that we've covered, I guess? Some of you look puzzled and overwhelmed. Family search can be that way. Um, things change. Going to need the microphone on that one. <laughs> I have ringing in my ears and a few other things going on here. Okay. They, they update the records all the time with new records. Is there a place you can go and see the new records? I mean, see a list of the new records. Um, probably. Mm -hmm. No, I wonder if it's on the blog. That's a good question. Uh, I don't know that the wiki is. I just um, ask because I get Facebook notices about all these new records they've added, and then I click on it, but they don't take me to what the new records are. So, well, that's just not <laughs> nice. <laughs> Well, what did I, what did my fingers do? New England, oh, it did New England. Um, I wonder if. There's the blog, maybe. Um, you used, that's what I was thinking is about, oh, uh, there's the blog. It's all about Roots Tech right now. Hmm. Bug can be very helpful to find out about what. Okay, my fingers just don't like to do what they're supposed to do. Okay, there are new historical records on this in December. A couple of them. Wonder if they have not. Huh. I would guess that there. This might be one place, but it doesn't appear to be. There we go. See where that takes us. Uh, right back to the same place. There's a what to expect. Um, you can sign up for alerts. Having said that, I don't remember how to do that. Is that I have signed up on the blog a couple times and I keep getting dumped because there's been a problem with um I have a Yahoo email and there's been a bit of a problem with family search and and Yahoo for some time for occasionally. Um don't know the perfect answer but i can looks like it's in the blog just hasn't been updated for january um, it tells you what what uh, records have been added now. yeah it'll for instance i'm not interested in records of china and stuff like that so it gives you a list here um yeah. very hard to read Um, gives you a list of where and how many and um, 
whether or not there are digital images. And the expanded collection, I believe, means that there is a collection of those particular records already. They're just adding two. Um, when you go to, uh, don't do that to me. When you go to, oh, I'm in the blog. I clicked out of that, didn't I? Hmm. Say what? I don't know where I'm at. I just want the, the brain is going, little tree will get you back to family search. Um, there are, let's go back to records. One of the things you can do in records that I did not mention is to... browse all collections, and I don't tend to do that. Um, but if you browse all collections, that is all of the collections that they have uh, indexed on Family Search, and it does give you a um, records number of records and last updated. Let me get back to a reasonable Zoom. And I, I was hoping they could, let's see. That's alphabetical, so it's not going to help us with the, it's not going to help with the, with the when. Oh, there we go. That's a way to do it, I guess. You can enter a collection title. It's a little bit cumbersome, but sometimes these things are. <clears throat> but you didn't hear me say that. Um, yeah, you can put in a country and then the last country. Right up there, yeah. So, yeah. No, well, that's because I wrote, typed the wrong thing. So there have been things updated in, well, not s relatively re recently within Germany, there's some, some things that have been updated. Tells you how many records are are in and how many records are in that database and the time frame when you look at that you realize that probably for 111 years that's a really small amount of of records that are available so you wouldn't be terribly disappointed if you don't find what you're looking for but it's certainly don't discount if if that's a category you're interested in anyone else Well, that's, I think, all I had, all you had. I think we're good. Wonderful. Thank you both for your time today. Sorry we overtook the <laughs> the time frame here. It's all good. Uh, just so everyone is aware, on Monday, March 11th, we're partnering with the Genealogical Society for their Allied with the Allies program. So that will be virtual but aired in the Rotary Room. And uh, Next Genealogy Plus is Wednesday, March 20th. So I hope to see you all there.